In this video, we're gonna talk about link bars. Whether it's link like that, or a link like that, or even the links that you're using for your watts. Link bars. We're gonna take it right back to the basics. Well, I get the question often, and I try and answer as many as questions as possible. One of the ones I got the other day was, um, they were building a suspension for the back of their car. And they asked about lower bars, lower link bars. And I said, make it as long as possible. And then of course, everybody agreed. And I actually think I had one person say, why? So I thought, wow, um, that's, that's an awesome question. And let's just go back to the basics of basics. Let's go back to something as simple as a link bar and why it's important to use it at its max. All right. Well, we're gonna talk about link bars. First of all, before we get started, this video is no way to show off or to prove a point or anything else. I'm just, just literally, I think it's really important in, in a video series. There's so many guys out there that have read 300 page pamphlets and wanna tell you all the technical jargon and I don't want to. I wanna break it down to the simplest of basic terms. And like today, we're gonna to talk about um, the, the link joint and, and how it affects something as simple as one item. And we're only going to do that one item today and that's it. So doesn't matter how you build your link joint. Doesn't matter if it's, um, built like a Z bar or whatever. The, the purpose of a link is to connect point A to point B. And if you remember the earlier video I did is to control the swing of whatever item it's attached to, which is called an arc. So I'm gonna put the camera on the little tray and, I'm, and I made some little miniature end links and we're gonna talk about it. All right, well, if you've seen the other video on arcs, this is gonna take it just a little bit further and we're talking about just a link, a single link. So this is your chassis. This is your rear suspension, and this would be your tire, so your pivot point to be right there on the rear end. If you had a leaf spring car, it had more than likely a shackle in the front and a shackle in the back, right? And you had your leaf spring. Well, that moves up and down because it's tied together. It doesn't have anywhere to go. That's why the shackle on the back has that little movement. So you've decided to go to a link suspension. So I made a couple of cool little links and we'll, we'll kind of work it out here. Okay. We're going to work off of that. So we'll take the first link. We'll say, we'll use the first link, you know, and you're going to, you're going to mount it off your, your leaf spring mount. Well, that's cool. That makes your fabrication pretty easy, right? That's your swing. So we're going to take, hold on and hold this one in its position or its space. Is that the side? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We're gonna hold it in its space, okay? We're gonna put this in there and we're gonna look at our swing. There we go. There's our arc. That's how that rear end moves. Okay, so let's go to a little bit longer arc. I mean, you know, I've told people to, to run the longest arc possible, so we're gonna pin it in its location, we'll look at the new, the new swing arm and we'll see a difference in swing radius. Look at this. So what's happening is the longer arm is now pulling the wheel less. 
So what's happening is that the, the rear end moves less. And if you put horsepower to it, that horsepower is gonna react less to it. So we're gonna go one more. So make it as long as possible. Say you go all the way up to the front. It's looking pretty good, right? You pin it, come in here, we'll move our arc. Man, look at that. So just want you to pay attention to that. So that what we were talking about, <coughs> when you make that lower link as long as possible, what happens is the rear end moves much less. So if you're putting a higher horsepower engine and it's putting more power to it, that shorter link is gonna have that wild reaction when it launches and takes off because it has a short leverage of movement and all that power is going to it. The longer that link, the more it's gonna absorb some of that power and the less that wheel is gonna move. I'm not gonna go any further than that. I think, I think, I think you absorb that. And you think about it, and we look at it, and hopefully, that little bit, hopefully that little bit will help you guys. Hopefully that little bit will help you guys build suspension. So all we do is talk about links if you like it, please like, subscribe, share, talk about your friends, watch it over and over. It's really uh, basic physics. I'm not doing this to show off. I'm not throwing a bunch of technical terms out there. I really just want you to enjoy building your suspension and, and, and have fun doing it. All right. Thank you again. Have a good day. Bye.